Hello and welcome to another video. Bowen from the future here. As you can see by the title of the video, we're going to be jumping into building the engine. The original plan was just to refresh the accessories on the engine. However, the plan has escalated now and I'm doing a fully forged motor, so I'm scrapping some of the footage that I've already filmed and we're just going to jump into me stripping down the long block and getting it ready for machining and we'll catch up later in the video. So let's jump into that. a few months and the engine has been and come back from the machine shop and it's ready for its clean down and assembly. I've had a couple of people ask me to be a little more technical when filming so I will be demonstrating how to check the oil clearance on one of the crankshaft main journals using a micrometer and dial bore gauge as opposed to the probably more typical plastic gauge method as well as running through some slight modifications to the block uh, like getting rid of the casting flash left there from the factory. In some cases, some of this casting flash is quite loose and under high revving conditions and creating harmonics. Some of that can break off and potentially end up in your sump slash oil pickup, as well as any sharp edges in the oil block, actually in the oil block, in the block act as stress points and can, that's typically where cracks can form. So we'll be getting rid of any sharp points or edges of casting flash as well as any casting tags. So let's jump right into that. Okay, so first step in the process when you're checking your oil clearance with a dial bore gauge and micrometer like I am, is to install your main caps, or in my case, girdle, with the bearings and accompanying fasteners installed and torque to spec. In my case, I'm using ARP hardware and they specify on the M10 main studs for the RB to torque to 60 foot pound, which obviously is done. Second step in the process is to measure the crankshaft journal diameter. Using the micrometer, I'll lower it over and wiggle it up and down just to find the widest point while doing up the thimble. Once the thimble's clicked a few times and stopped moving, we've found our widest point, so I'll lock off my tab, pull it off and check my measurement and move over to the dial ball gauge. 
Now the dial bore gauge is zeroed on number one crankshaft journal's diameter, I can stick it in the block and we can take our oil clearance measurement. But first I'll just go through the specifications I'll be given. So the engine machinist says I need to look for between 0.051 and 0.063 millimeters of clearance. If we have a look on the gauge here, 0.01 millimeters is one of these little increments. Because the block journal is obviously larger as it's receiving the crankshaft, we'll be counting back from zero. So one, two, three, four, that five and six mark. We're basically looking between those two. So we'll stick the dial ball gauge in the block here and wiggling it back and forth on the gauge, we can see we just have at our tightest point, just under the 0 0.60 millimeters of clearance, which is perfect. It is on the looser side compared to the OE specification. However, this is no longer an OE motor. It is a forged motor that's receiving a Nitto sign drive billet oil pump. The high volume oil pump coupled with the fact that I'll be running a thicker oil than factory. I'll be running a 1060 in this. It's definitely not gonna hurt having the oil clearance slightly on the looser side of OE. It's actually gonna be really good for it. So now all that's left to do is repeat the same process for the mains and all the big ends. Then I'm gonna take the girdle out, give the block a really good clean down and a fresh coat of paint before final assembly. Now that the engine's painted, the next step in the process is to clean and grub screw my crankshaft. To do so, I'll be using these little nylon brushes going through each little oiling hole and grub screw hole, combined with some brake clean and compressed air, spraying brake clean through until no more dirt or debris remains. Even though the engine machinist will clean your engine components, it's always the responsibility of the final engine assembler to do a thorough clean before final assembly, as usually a fair amount of dirt or debris may remain after the engine machining process. installed and spins it's time to move on to the next few steps which will be checking the crankshaft and float balancing my piston and rod assembly gapping my rings and checking piston to cylinder wall clearance luckily for me my engine machinist has already gapped my rings so all I have to do is confirm the gap is correct before installing all the pistons but we'll quickly run through the process of checking what your ring gap should be using uh, CP's ring gap spec, sh spec sheet. All right, so to find our ring gap, all we have to do is convert our 86 mil ball to inches, which is 3.386 inches times, we're going with the drag racing road racing application, five thousandths, which is 0 0.005, which turns out to be 0 0.0169, 17 thousandths. And then for our second ring, we're looking for it to be four to eight thousandths bigger than the top ring. So then we just go plus 0 0.004 equals 20 thousandths to 24 thousandths for our second ring and the oil ring has a minimum of 15 thousandths.
set and checked, I've gone ahead and weighed my pistons and rods separately on some electronic scales. When I'm balancing a piston and rod combo, I like to get it to the tenth of a gram, which is the first decimal place. In my case, I was lucky enough to match my heaviest rod with my lightest piston and my lightest piston with my heaviest rod, which has given me a combination of 1097.1 grams for each piston and rod combo. So now all that's left is to throw the rings on the pistons, connect the pistons to the con rod and get everything together and talked up. Step one is to just do up the rod bolts by hand to get the little locating dowels sitting in the rod properly. And then pull the rod bolts back out, lubricate the threads and the mating surface on the rod cap, and then torque them in three even steps to 70 to 84 pounds. So with all the pistons and rods in, I'm gonna call that a completed rotating assembly and finish off the video here. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me assemble the bottom end and explaining some of the technicalities behind it. Although the bottom end is together, there is still heaps to go. So stay tuned for the next one where I'll be turning the RB30 into a long block and bolting all my accessories on, getting it ready to go in the car. With that all said and done, thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you in the next one.